Hey, yo, it's Crack Lock and Challengers. In this video, we are not only going to be unboxing live freshwater clams, but we're also going to talk about the care and the rundown on how to keep them in your own aquariums. So about a year ago, I decided to pick up some freshwater clams from my 90 gallon aquarium. And when I got them, I was so excited about the fact that I was having like a natural filter in my aquarium. And when I got them, I decided to make a video about them. And the actual owners of the company that sells them, they actually contacted me and asked if I wanted to get some more for a video and that I could possibly put in my 90 gallon and my 60 gallon aquarium. And of course I said yes. I mainly said yes because the first time I got them, I only got I think like five or six and that wasn't enough for all my aquariums. And I really wanted to have a couple more in my 90 and a couple in my 60 gallon aquarium. So I actually got them a couple weeks ago and I'm gonna play the footage of when I unbox them and make sure you stay tuned because after I show all that footage, I'll talk about how you can keep them in your own aquariums and a little bit of the benefit and also risk about keeping them. What's poppin' future challengers? I have a box that I'm about to open or unbox and put into my aquariums. So you already know by the title of this video and I probably talked to you guys already, but these are freshwater clams and I've had them before and I decided to get some more. So uh, yeah, let's get unboxing. Okay, airbags and a styrofoam box. Oh, okay, here we go. Oh, there they are. That is so awesome. Oh, I don't want to move them and kill them. But look at all our clams. I, I got so many. They're not all going in one aquarium. They're going in a couple, but this is really cool. I've ordered from them before and they reached out to me and said that if I want some, I can get some. And I told them that I'd want to put some in my 90 gallon and also some in my 60 gallon. So yeah, I'm just going to temperature acclimate them. Um, I want to add them in. They, they've been shipping for a couple days, so I don't want them to have to... Uh, be in the water and the water looks a little dirty so they've obviously been shipped for a couple days here we go temperature acclimation and I'm gonna feed these guys while they acclimate okay guys so it is time to add them in I have a bucket right here so basically what I'm going to do is cut open the bag let most of the water out and try catching some of the snails I'm adding some of them into my 90 gallon and also some into my 60 gallon which has my shrimp and my betta fish when the shrimp are out being active all right let's go I don't know if I'm gonna put the camera down for this, so I'll be able like to do it better and I won't mess up. Um, but yeah, I'll pick up the camera in a couple seconds. Okay, so I just added them in and a heads up in case you ever decide to pick these up. Um, I'll have a link down below for them in case you do. But one thing you wanna do is when you add them to the aquarium, make sure you put them in spots that you'll recognize. And then you can wait over the next couple days to see if they move at all. And that's how you know if they're alive or not. If they like disappear throughout the aquarium, then you know that they're still alive and they're kicking it. But if they open up their shell and they expose their insides, they're usually dead. So I added them to this aquarium. You can see some there and also some in the back. Nice. All right, back to you, future James. All right, so yeah, that was about two weeks ago and I've been having them in my aquarium and they're absolutely awesome. I'm gonna show you some footage. It's kind of hard to film them just because they spend almost all of their life underneath the substrate and it's kind of hard to find them. But if you do decide to keep them, it is important that you have a malleable substrate kind of like sand or gravel or a mixture of both just so they're able to burrow themselves underneath the substrate. So I'm going to stop that video for a second, but if you saw something on the clams, you might have actually seen like a little opening on the top of their shell, and that's actually their mouth. And water goes inside of it, and also little particles and other things go inside of it, and that's actually how they filter it. So you can see why they'd be great natural filtration for your aquariums. And ironically, I found out that many people actually keep these in their aquariums, and they actually call them the natural filtration, which makes sense. And when you pair them with a regular filter and some plants, it makes an awesome, super clean aquarium. Now do not, and I repeat, do not go into a random pond or a random lake near you and find some clams on the shore or something, pick them up and put them in your aquarium. That is a no bueno. That is absolutely not good because actually most natural clams reproduce by releasing spores into the water column. And those spores get caught up into fish's gills and they actually start developing as little clams. And when they get older, they can actually kill and damage the fish's gills. So you do not want that in your aquarium at all. The clams that I actually picked up were hand bred and actually reproduced one at a time. So that's really why you want to make sure that you get ones that are from accredited breeder because you do not want random spores flying around killing all your fish in your aquarium. That would suck. 
So even though that these clams are like meant for your aquarium and stuff, they can be kind of risky keeping. And the main reason is if they do die, even though they are very hardy and they can survive warm water, they can withstand cold water, even though they can do all that, if they do die, they don't float like normal fish to the surface. They actually stay down and they open up their shell. But the thing is, if they are underneath the substrate and they die, they could start decomposing and that can release ammonia and that can create an ammonia spike in your aquarium. And that can be super detrimental to all your fish and your snails, your other shrimp and stuff. So that's why they are kind of sketchy when you're keeping them. But as long as you supply them with sufficient amounts of food and there's enough particles in the water for them to clean, they should be okay. If you do decide to keep them, I would recommend you looking around your aquarium like once a week, just checking and seeing if any of the shells are open because that could be kind of sketchy. I personally don't really have to worry about it because the aquariums that I have are really big and the water column is so large that if there were to be a death, it wouldn't really affect it. But another really great thing is that I have so many shrimp and so many snails and Corydoras, Plecos, and other things that will take care of the decomposing matter. So I'm kind of covered because I already have a cleanup crew, but yeah, I'm not really worried about it. But of course, if I did see one die, I might decide to remove it or I might just let nature take its course and help it decompose. So when you're keeping them, these guys are not really meant for aquariums smaller than about 10 gallons just because they do need a lot of water flowing so they have enough filtration and enough stuff to eat. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't really recommend them for aquariums under 10 gallons. Personally, again, I would always go with bigger aquariums are better, especially if they're natural um, aquariums, just because there's more matter for them to eat and it's just better for them in general. And even though they do not seem like they move, they actually have a little muscle that goes out and that's called their foot and that's what they do to move around. And they can actually burrow themselves in the substrate and they actually move a lot underneath the surface. So you do need to make sure that you're careful and you have enough room in your aquarium. I did read somewhere that they could uproot your plants. I haven't really dealt with that, but if they do, you can just put the plants back down and replant them. Another thing you need to be mindful of is since they are filtering water out of your water column, you need to have enough flowing water. So you would not want to have just a sponge filter in your aquarium. You want to have a canister filter or a hang on back that flows enough water throughout the aquarium. Personally, I'd really recommend having a wave maker if your water isn't that moving and you need more water flow. Using a wave maker is really great. I'll have some links for everything down below in case you want to pick them up for your aquarium. And also while you're down there, if you like learning kind of like this video and you want to learn some more things, check out Skillshare for one monthly fee you have access to thousands of different courses and I actually made a course myself with the link down below you will get two months for free using my link and you can also check out my online course about photography so that's really awesome if you decide to check it out now one interesting comment I got from my last video was what can these guys live with and that's kind of an interesting question because you wouldn't really be concerned with what these guys can live with and they're actually very very peaceful so I have them in my community aquariums. I'm not worried about plecos trying to eat them. As long as they get buried underneath the substrate, they're basically completely safe. Now, the one thing that I would not recommend keeping them with, and it's not because the clams might hurt them, it's because they might get hurt by something else. And that's big fish, kind of like gar, probably cichlids. And I would really not recommend having them with pea puffers, just because pea puffers in their nature tend to eat snails and eat clams or puffers in general. So yeah, you want to kind of avoid bigger fish or aggressive fish that actually might eat the clams because you don't want to spend tons of money on clams and then just have them, you know, be killed. <laughs> Who, who wants that? And I mean, the fish might confuse them because they might be like, oh, it's food, not a friend. And of course, clams are friends. Now make sure you hit the like button and subscribe button if you haven't already. Also, check out my vlog channel. I've been posting videos about like the fish room and some other things. Basically, whatever I don't want to show on this channel, I'll show on my separate channel. And that second channel will have probably more videos than I post on this one and they might just be more cut and dry. So it might be a little bit more raw. So if you're into that, check that out. Links will be down below or in an iCard or at the end of this video. Now we're gonna finish this video by me taking the camera off and we'll We'll try hunting for them. It is pretty difficult to get a good shot of these just because they spend so much time underneath the substrate. I did move some things around my 60 gallons, so I do see a couple that are kind of gone up from the substrate, but they usually are underneath the substrate, so it's hard to take photos or videos of. So hopefully I'll be able to show you guys, but I do see a couple around, so we'll be able to get some cool shots. And before I do that, hit the like button, you know, the usual stuff. All right, let's go. Okay, so here is my 90 gallon aquarium, and I think, okay, there's one right there. So he is currently out of the substrate for some reason. I don't really know why, but I really don't think he's dead because there is a dead one over there and you can actually see the shell has opened completely all the way in the back there. So the inside was probably eaten by a pleco or something. So yeah, that's basically what happens when they die. And that's why it can be so horrible because if you're just looking at the aquarium, you can't really see all the way back there. So you don't really know um, if they died or not. And then there is another, oh, there's a live one right there. Okay, so yeah, there's, there's one right there, but as you can see, there is one right, I can't even get my finger, right there. 
and he is currently filtering out media. You can see his mouth is open, and that is how he is absorbing water and filtering it. So, yeah, that's basically what it looks like. And that's in this aquarium, and I'm sure there are tons in this aquarium. I don't know if they're breeding yet. They do require a little bit more water flow for them to breed. But this filter is absolutely amazing, and that's why this aquarium looks so good. But yeah, I don't know if they've started to breed. They might have, and I just haven't noticed, but... Yeah, I'm not really planning on breeding them, and these guys are kind of more of a specialty. They live a little bit longer than you think, a couple years, and that's pretty awesome. So my other aquariums, my 10 gallons, my 20 gallon, and here's my 60. And there is actually a dead one right over there. His, his, his clam hasn't completely opened up um, his shell, but that can happen. Oh my gosh, you guys see all this hydra? This is horrible, and I'm making a video about it, and I actually got some medicine to get rid of it but it is kind of crazy so that is a horrible thing that is in my aquarium so you'll see a video coming up soon about it so here are two clams in particular you can see right there those are those are what they look like when they're kind of on the surface and i'm sure there are quite a few underneath the substrate and you can see i have a couple layers i have a layer of this sand and it's kind of also pebbly on the top and then dark sand underneath so they're probably just chilling underneath there they don't really go out that much they prefer to be underneath the surface and whenever they do move they tend to go at night and they're uh, they're pretty cool in that way. What's up, bud? Bro, these guys, they eat so viciously. I fed them this morning, but I'm gonna feed them again and you're gonna see, like... Dude, this is not sped up. This is like completely normal. They just go so fast and they eat so fast. And the Buenos Aires Tetras, those guys go crazy. And they actually splash water. Can you see the angelfish? That's a female one right there. She actually puts her head out of the water. I was planning on getting a couple more angelfish. I kind of, it would be really dope if they actually breed in this aquarium. Um, I might need to add some jungle val, some taller plants, to kind of to give them some more hiding spots. But that could happen in the future. We have our other garami back there. He barely comes out. He's kind of a shy guy. And that, that garami right there, as you can see, he's, he's right there. He actually looks a lot like an archer fish. Which is kind of funny. That was one of my dream fish that I wanted to get. And it was going to be my 150 gallon aquarium. But I never ended up doing that. And I did get rid of that aquarium. So unfortunately, yeah. Alright guys, that is going to be it for the video. I hope you enjoyed. I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Peace.